Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions uh, happening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And the presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. And first up is Elmhurst University. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Megan Wada. I am with Elmhurst University. I'm one of the assistant directors in the Office of Admission. So today you'll hear about our beautiful campus and the community that we offer for all of our students. So first, we have been around for almost 150 years. We just became Elmhurst University this past Summer. So we are very excited to now officially be Elmhurst University, previously Elmhurst College. We are a certified arboretum. We have a beautiful campus now that it is getting to be closer to springtime. We have just under about 3,000 undergraduate students. So with that, our average class size is right at about 17 or 18 students. We have a very tight-knit campus community with our faculty and our students on our campus. We are conveniently located in the western suburbs of Chicago in Elmhurst, Illinois. From campus, it's a quick walk into our Elmhurst City Center where students can grab a cup of coffee or go to the bowling alley. We also are within walking distance to the Metro train line that'll take students right into downtown Chicago. So we really maximize being so close to the city as well. In addition to that, we have over 70 different majors that students can go through and select from. So we have our top programs majoring from business to nursing to education and music. But then we also have history. We have a digital media program. We have a wide variety of courses that students can go through and take. And being a liberal arts institution, our students get to dabble in a lot of areas outside of their major if they choose to pursue something a little bit different outside of their major as a potential minor to get some specialization in. We really pride ourselves in the faculty connection that our students have and that campus community reaches within our faculty. With a smaller campus size, with the average class size right at about 18 students, our professors want to get to know our students and make sure that they get all of their questions answered and they can really utilize their resources. So your professor is gonna be the one leading your class as well as grading your assignments and be there for you during office. Hours. So our faculty are incredible resources for our students. With that, we really want students to have professional development experiences with an internship components. Um, with that, we really maximize being so close to downtown Chicago and have our students take advantage of internship opportunities within the city of Elmhurst in downtown Chicago and depending on the connection that students wanna go through and have. So we really want students to have that professional development. We do have a center on campus that is dedicated to our students and their professional development. So we really want our students to have that community on campus, but then building that network off campus. With that, we really want students to take advantage of that community on our campus as well with being involved in our different student organizations. So building that community is incredibly important and for our students to find what's important to them um, and what they want to participate in, whether they wanna be a theater student and major in something totally separate and just participate in those activities or be involved in our music program and not be a music major. We want students to really diversify themselves and, and challenge themselves outside the classroom to take advantage of participating in something else off, you know, 
on campus or an external um, opportunity with some different um, partnerships that we have like Habitat Community where students can utilize and, and do some service trips with that. Really want students to explore what's important to them inside the classroom and outside in our organizations. Students do have the chance to live on campus. We have just under about a thousand students that live on campus. We have on-campus houses, on-campus apartments outside of these six residence halls. So we really want our students to have that option or students choose to go through and commute as an option with our central location. As for some of our admission criteria, um, we are still accepting applications. So for any seniors that might be tuning into this session or listening to the recording, we are on rolling admission for our students that are underclassmen, our freshmen, juniors, and sophomores that are interested in looking into applying to Elmhurst in the future. We are on a early action timeline, so students have a chance to go through and take advantage of that. Um, for our seniors, we are test optional this year, so you can go through and complete your application, submit in your high school transcript and your essays. So with that, in the future, we will update you as kind of we decide for test optional in the future. So that really wraps up those main items that I wanted to share about our Elmhurst University um, experiences that we offer and the community building that we have. And here's my contact information if you have any other questions after today. Great, thank you, Megan. And up next is Albion College. You're muted. Sorry about that. Hi, everyone. My name is Clea Roberts. Um, when I first came on, I was registered under the name Robert Ryan. Um, so there's two counselors. We split Chicago, um, the Noble Network, in half. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a presentation of normally what we share with the students during their daily A's. Um, and so students can register for that and get a feel of how um, campus would be. Um, so these are some of the topics that I'm going to cover today, um, what we like to call Albion College Knowledge, the application process, admissions, activities, um, Albionism, and affordability. Uh, so these are Albion College Knowledge, some of what we like to call our quick facts. Uh, so as you can see, our enrollment is roughly between 1,550 students. Um, and our average class size is about 16. So one thing that I like to stress to students that is very vital that when you're in a class, class, class size that is small, that to make sure you stay on top of all of your assignments. Um, being, in a, being at a small liberal arts school, professors will know you by name. They will know you um, as a student. They will know you as a person. So they are able to weigh out the students who are not um, doing their assignments, who are not attentive in class and who are not trying to be a part of class discussions. So if you ever are in a small class size, um, please make sure you pay close attention to the assignments because um, it is easy to weigh that out. I've had, had classes um, where there were six students, there might have been eight students. And so it is very important to make sure you stay on top of those assignments. So typically in those classes, there's 11 to one ratio. Um, we'll have a professor and the students. Um, there are times where there is um, a professor and a teacher's assistant. Typically there's a professor and teacher's assistant when there are um, a, there's a lab class, excuse me, there's a lab. So normally in our science courses, um, our labs can be between two hour and four hour long. And so we know it's kind of rigorous. So there are um, TAs that are on hand and very uh, helpful when assisting students during those lab classes. Um, placement rate is roughly 97% and 98.5% um, of our students uh, graduate within the four years and they go off to graduate schools. We do not have a graduate program 
right now, but we are partnering with schools to um, further our pre-med. So students that are interested in pre-med um, in the next couple, probably about a year or so, they're gonna be partnering um, with Western and they're going to have a graduate program for pre-med students at Albion College. Um, so right now we are test optional. Um, we understand that due to COVID, um, there are a lot of, uh, people are going through a lot of different challenges and changes. So we are accommodating to that. Um, one thing when I am recruiting my students, I really enjoy reading their essays um, because it helps me take that uh, holistic approach and being able to see um, how they can contribute to the school and what we can do um, to help them become a better Brit or a future Brit. Um, students do have the option to bypass the essay. They do not have to submit an essay, but I really do recommend it because it does help build that relationship between the counselor and the student. Um, and specifically for me, I like to read, read through my students' essays and find similarities that we have or find connections for them on campus and resources. So when they do come to campus, they have those resources um, and don't have to actually go out and search for them. The application process. So the rectangles that are the biggest corresponds to what's more important. Of course, we wanna see your transcript and we also wanna see students grade trend. Um, so if you didn't do that well your first year, um, but you pick yourself back up during your second year, we wanna see that. Most of the time, um, being that Albion is liberal arts school, some of the classes that you may have taken in high school are similar to the classes that you will take at Albion. Um, so we wanna be able to see that, to see those similarities that the classes offer. Recommendations is important. Students can get their recommendations from um, a teacher. They can get a recommendations from a job, from their manager, supervisor. Um, if you play sports, we want to see those as well. Discipline history. If you have any suspension, any trouble that you've been in during the school year, we want to see that. Typically, I don't get applications where students have any discipline history. Um, the most I get is students were suspended for, you know, something minor and something like that is not going to make a big impact or difference on your application. And then your essay. Um, as I mentioned before in the previous slide, it is optional, um, but I really do enjoy reading students' essays. So for me, um, if you're thinking about applying to Alvin College, please submit your essay because it, it does really help us build that one-on-one -on -one connection with the students. And then lastly, your extracurriculum activities. Um, most of the time students list their extracurricular activities and we're able to compare, we're able to partner them with activities on campus as well. Um, okay, so we have our activities. So as you can see in the picture um, in the background, there's a whole bunch of students. And so what we like to call is our Britain bound day. Um, so um, what this looks like is students from all different clubs and organizations come and participate. So if you're interested in being a part of Greek life, you can find the sororities and fraternities there and sign up. Um, if you're interested in athletics, they're there too. And one thing I like to stress about our athletics is that students, we take pride in our students' academics first. So you're a student first and then you're athlete second. We offer over a hundred clubs and organizations. Um, there's a lot of umbrella clubs. So we have Asian Awareness, BSA, which is Black Student Alliance, Black Student Alliance, we have Latin X and LG, LGB Brits, LG, LGB Brits, excuse me, um, and non-religious clubs. So if there's a club that you're interested in that you don't see that Albion offers, you're more than welcome to say, hey, I have a group of kids. Um, we wanna put this cooking club together. Um, and by all means, Albion is very supportive of that and we want to support you 110%. And then Union Board is a student um, ran organization and each semester throughout the years, they're putting on events. So my first year as a freshman, um, I attended a, a Cedar Point trip. And I know um, a lot of, of my Chicago students have never been to Cedar Point before. They've been to Six Flags and here in uh, Michigan, we don't have Six Flags, we have Cedar Point. So it's always nice to see the difference. Um, so there was a hypnotist that came on campus. Um, they have therapy dogs that come around midterm times. And like now students are in their midterm season. 
And so with that, if COVID did not exist, with COVID, without COVID restrictions, students um, would be able to go, you know, see a masseuse. Um, they're able to get a, some aroma, aromatherapy um, and just to get them out of the dorm rooms and get away from their academics and um, just to help them breathe a little bit and relax um, during exams week. And so it's a pretty cool event. It gets everyone out on the quad um, and you can see everyone and people from Albion's community are welcome to attend as well. So this is what we like to call. Great. Um, so we act we actually have to move on to our next uh, presenter. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. And so up next is St. Anthony College of Nursing. Hi. Thank you so much. Yes, my name is Alina. I am the recruiter here for St. Anthony College of Nursing. Thank you to all of our participants today. Thank you so much for all of our students who are going to be um, attending our um, webinar either today or um, in the future. Um, I just want to kind of touch on St. Anthony College of Nursing. We are an upper division nursing program located in Rockford, Illinois. Um, so how our program actually works is you have the opportunity to do your prerequisite courses or um, like general education courses. So it's similar to like your English, your science, your biology, You'll do those courses first and then transfer to St. Anthony College of Nursing to do your um, nursing classes, your labs and clinicals to earn your Bachelor of Science in Nursing and RN license. So you really get the best of both worlds with St. Anthony. Um, so the number one question I get is, why should I choose St. Anthony College of Nursing? Well, nursing is our jam here. We are a strictly nursing program and our uh, new results just came out and we are um, we have a 99% pass rate for the NCLEX on our very first attempt. Um, so what the NCLEX says is your big board exam um, that you will um, have to earn your, oops, excuse me, um, your, um, sorry about that. Um, so your big board exam in order to earn your RN license. Um, so at St. Anthony College of Nursing, we have a 99% pass rate. That means 99% of our students pass on the very first attempt. So you know, um, and we are so proud of our students because that NCLEX pass rate um, shares how well the nursing program not only um, helps you pass the NCLEX, but to be a successful nurse. So those two things are really gonna be helpful in um, choosing a nursing program. So as you're doing research, have that be your really number one focus into a great nursing program. Um, so I wanna jump right into our high school early entry program. We have, um, three requirements and what this high school early entry program does, guaranteed direct admission into our nursing program and you get to earn a bonus scholarship. So definitely we focus on seniors in high school all the way up through your first semester of college. So if you're into that um, time frame, definitely encourage you to apply for a high school early entry program. So you're able to apply now when you're ready to transfer, you are directly admitted and you get to earn a bonus scholarship. Um, so the requirements are to have seven semesters of high school complete, Two and a half years of high school science and a cumulative GPA of 3.25 or higher. So again, if you're meeting those requirements or going to be super close, definitely encourage you to apply to our high school early entry program. If you have any questions about this, I'm the recruiter here. So I meet with all of our transfer students and we are transfer only. So definitely happy to answer any of those questions if you're not sure if you're quite there yet. Um, but the biggest recommendation is I have students um, having their official transcripts sent to St. Anthony College of Nursing. Um, if you're looking into our high school early entry program, definitely have your high school transcript sent. If you're focusing more on your um, college courses and um, not meeting our high school early entry requirements, then we'll have you send your college transcripts when it gets closer. I always like to throw up our admissions email address up on here, but I will make sure my information is included um, at the very end. But of course, definitely the biggest recommendation is having your official transcript sent so we can review your classes that you've completed to see how um, close you are to starting at St. Anthony as well as your um, nursing opportunities here. Um, so we'll jump right into our application process. So whether you're applying high school early entry or a traditional admissions process, the application is gonna be the same. The only difference is your transcript that you send us. So it makes it really short and sweet. Um, so it's gonna be your application, application fee, your entrance exam and your official transcripts. And if you already sent your official transcripts, we can check that right off the list here. So we'll dive right into our application process. Visit sacn.edu, that's our website. Um, I took a screenshot right off of our page here so you can click that big orange button and you'll go right to our application process. 
super short and sweet. Um, you'll actually be able to pay your application fee like that as well, which that covers your entrance exam with St. Anthony College of Nursing, which we're gonna jump into that right now. Um, pretty much any nursing program, you're gonna have some type of entrance exam. So we use the T's, test of essential academic skill, to be tested on math, reading, English, and science. So it's similar to um, your ACT or SAT. So if you haven't taken that or preparing to take it, it's gonna be similar to that. Um, but it's based at the high school level. So you're not taking any like master's level science questions on this or anything. So it's um, definitely at the high school level. Um, so after you complete your high school early entry or um, application process, again, it's your application, application fee, official transcripts and your T's exam will then um, have you focus on your prerequisite courses. And I like to throw up a transfer guide, just a sample transfer guide up on the screen. So again, you're gonna be doing your prerequisite courses first. So on the sample transfer guide here, on the left-hand side, you'll see our prerequisite courses and the exact courses that you can take at this specific institution. But as that time gets closer, um, you and I can sit down and really see what classes that will transfer right into St. Anthony College of Nursing. So again, you'll do your prerequisite courses first and then do your nursing classes, labs, and clinicals with St. Anthony College of Nursing. Um, I do like to throw our financial aid information up um, Definitely encourage you to fill out the FAFSA, free application for federal student aid. Um, definitely the biggest piece there um, for um, the financial aid process. And then I will also include my contact information, which is right up on the screen here, my phone number, email address. You can follow us on Facebook. Um, super happy that you were able to join us today. Again, I'm the recruiter here for St. Anthony College of Nursing. So if you have any questions about our high school early entry program, our transfer process into St. Anthony College of Nursing, we are here to help. Um, we're here to help you reach your nursing goals as well as your um, future opportunities into our graduate programs as well. Um, I want to thank you all again so much for joining us today as well as watching the webinar again. Um, thank you and um, have a great day. Thank you. Great, right, thanks so much. Our next presentation is from DePaul University. All right, hello everyone. Um, my name is Quincy. Um, I am the admission counselor for DePaul University. Um, so just to get started, DePaul is located in Greencastle, Indiana, so about two and a half hours south of the city of Chicago, um, which is my territory. Um, small town, about 10,000 people in Greencastle, um, but Really, as you can see, beautiful campus. The building that you see in this is East College, our oldest building on campus, and the one probably most photographed by students. This is a bit of our demographics. Um, we've got about 1,900 students on our campus. So we're a small liberal arts institution. Our average class size is about 15 students. Our student faculty ratio is about eight to one. Um, so you are going to know your professors. You're going to know the students in your class. Um, it's very common for your professor to come watch you at a sporting event or, you know, ask how you're doing outside of the classroom. Um, it's probably one of my favorite parts. I also, fun fact, graduated from DePaul in 2019. So love the institution and kind of can speak from experience. But as you can see, most of our students are involved in our College of Liberal Arts. We also do have a school of music. So if you have a passion for music, um, you play an instrument, uh, your dream is to be in the opera one day. Um, our school music department is small, um, but we have four bachelor of music degree options for students if that's something that you want to pursue um, as a career. We've got about 20% of our students first generation, 20% uh, as well as legacy students. That's probably one of my favorite statistics just because um, Family connections and family dynamics are super popular for DePaul. My mom was a DePaul graduate, so you always have those people pursuing and pushing you to look at DePaul just because of the amazing experiences they had. Um, we do have students from about 39 states and 39 countries. So if you do end up coming to a small town, Greencastle, Indiana, surrounded by cornfields, you will get to meet students from all over the world, um, which is pretty incredible. For being a small liberal arts college, um, we really value that diversity component and learning from one another um, in the classroom. This is our College of Liberal Arts and School of Music. So you can kind of see they're split up. If you do have that music passion, you can see our four music degree programs you can pursue. Most of our students are involved in that liberal arts program. We do have 49 majors and 56 minors. The bonus of being an interdisciplinary institution is you can pursue multiple passions. If you wanna be a computer science and English writing double major and add on a religious studies minor, logically for a career, there's not one thing you could do with that. But at DePaul, 
you have that ability to pursue all of those passions, still um, graduate in four years and learn how all three of those can connect um, in a career and in life in general. These are some um, co-curricular and extracurricular um, opportunities for students. We really value what you learn in the classroom is important, but also taking that outside of the classroom and applying it to real world experiences is just as important in your academics. So DePaul actually requires two of these opportunities within your four years. Trust me, you will pursue way more than just the minimum of two. Um, our winter and May terms, winter, take place in the month of January, one course for three weeks, May terms, end of May, early June, same concept, one course for three weeks. You can take the class on campus. The picture you see here is of our EMT course. In that three week time frame, you end up being a certified EMT and you can actually work with the ambulance in Greencastle, which is exciting. You can also study abroad if you wanna go abroad for a short time or you can do um, job experiences and do a short term internship. 30% of our students are involved in faculty student research. We don't have any master's degree programs for a reason. We want our students to work directly with our faculty members in research opportunities. We do have study abroad. When you go abroad, you can do a full semester or a short three week experience in those winter and May terms. In those abroad opportunities, you can do research, you can do an internship, or you can study at another university. And then lastly, internships are super important, um, applying what you're learning in the classroom to a career. Um, so we have a, a program called Handshake and a center called the Hubbard Center that will help you apply for internship experiences and careers, get you prepped for a resume and cover letter, um, do mock interviews if you need to practice um, an interview before you um, go for the actual interview with the company. So fun things about DePaul, we have 120 clubs and organizations. We've got intramural volleyball, hiking club. It's super easy to start a club on campus if we don't have one you would like. We do have 23 varsity athletic teams. If you're super passionate about theater or love to hear speakers come to campus, we do have over 200 concerts, art shows, performances, and speaker series. And then wellness is super important as well. So if you um, want counseling services, we have those directly for our students right on campus. If you feel physically ill, we have doctors on campus as well. And lastly, um, I do like to note, DePaul is not a religious um, institution. You're not affiliated with a specific religion but we do have a center for spiritual life. So spirituality is super important to you or your faith is. Sami is our um, director for our spiritual life and he'll get you connected to that community on our campus. For our application process, you can apply two different ways. You can apply through our Common App or directly on our website. Um, we are test optional, so either way, we will review you holistically, which just basically means one thing on your application will not define the decision. So definitely encourage you, you know, fill out our application. If you do test optional, either way it will not affect, um, will not be the one defining decision um, for admission here. These are our deadlines. Um, early decision is a little bit different from early action. Early decision is a binding contract. Um, early action is not. You will automatically be reviewed for merit scholarship as well, which is important to note. Uh, and then this is our social media, definitely follow us. Um, and lastly, if you wanna get connected, definitely reach out to me. This is my office line um, and my email. So I'd love to um, talk more about the call with you if you have any questions. Great, thank you, Quincy. And next up is Southern Illinois University. All righty, thank you, Matt. So hello everyone, my name is Terrence. Let me share my screen right now with you all. So thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on this wonderful Wednesday or whatever your day jo you're joining us from in the future. Um, as I said, my name is Terrence Bishop. I primarily work with first time freshmen from Central Illinois, but I'm happy to work with any of you with any questions you have. I'm gonna get started talking about Southern Illinois University, the town we live in, our programs, and really just providing a general view of all things that make us Salukis. So let's talk about our town first. Carbondale is a really nice mix between nature town and college town. So whether you're someone who wants to go watch a live concert outdoors, or you're someone who wants to go rock climb, or you just wanna to go to the mall and watch a movie, we've really got the best of both worlds in terms of those adventures. We're in the Shawnee National Forest. Um, so there's a lot of things to do all around us here in Carbondale. And I also really love how you have SIU, and you have Carbondale and they coexist beautifully, which creates a lot of opportunities for our students for internships in our community. And really just means that the locals really welcome you and make you feel like you belong, making it a wonderful place to put down roots for four or more years. 
So let's talk about academics. At the core of academics at SIU is hands-on learning experiences. So whether you're a business student and you're buying, selling, and trading stocks in real time on our campus, or you're a student who works for our College of Mass Communication um, and you're working behind the scenes at sporting events, you know, recording and doing the broadcasting, we really want to combine that really awesome classroom learning with hands-on experiences that give you confidence in those skills and allow you to do a little bit more with that. So we have about 10,000 undergraduate students, which really gives us the best of both worlds between the feeling of a small college where you can really get plugged in and your professors get to know you individually um, and they can challenge you and support you. But we've got the resources and opportunities of a large institution. We're a tier one research institution. That's the highest you can go but we have a lot of opportunities for that. So that allows our students to get involved in research the first semester of their freshman year. That is unheard of. And there's opportunities for that research in all of our different departments. So there's a lot of ways that students can get their hands dirty and really live that career um, before they graduate. So let's talk a little bit about involvement. Involvement is the spice of life in college. This gives you an opportunity to um, seek out different causes that you're passionate about and just to have fun and to get plugged in. We have over 300 registered student organizations here. That is so many different opportunities for you to find your people and to find that community. Uh, we have involvement coaches who you can sit down with and talk about your involvements and your passion and what you would like to do. And they'll help recommend different student organizations that would be a good fit for you. And it's a really straightforward process to start a new student organization. So I highly encourage you to look into these. Um, these allow you to pick up different skills and have different experiences um, outside of just the, the typical major experiences. So I do have to touch real generally on our housing because this is something that a lot of students get excited about. We have the largest square footage residence hall rooms of any state school in Illinois. And for the past two years, those rooms have been offered as singles. That is so much room for activities for our students. Um, so I definitely encourage you to look into that if that's something that's exciting to you. Let's talk a little bit about athletics here at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Um, the biggest thing that's worth mentioning here is the fact that all of our D1 athletics, our football, basketball, volleyball, all of those are included with tuition. So you pay nothing extra to go to all of those athletic events. So it's never a choice between pizza or the game. It's always both. Uh, we also have club sports. Those club sports, you still get to travel and compete. And we also have intramural sports, which give you an opportunity to run around with your buddies um, and live your best life. So I wanted to really quickly just show a screenshot of our freshman scholarships just real briefly, um, because I think it's important to know what those are um, so that you can motivate yourself to keep reaching for those different levels. Um, so you'll notice that our scholarships start at a 2.75 GPA. That's actually our automatic acceptance criteria. We are a test optional university. If you have above a 2.75, not only are you gonna be admitted, but you are gonna start qualifying for scholarships automatically. Um, we do have some higher level scholarships as well. And you will notice that we do have a test score attached to that. You can submit test scores and they'll help you. They will never hurt you. So our application process, we have an online application. We're not a member of the Common App, but our online application is pretty straightforward. So it only takes about 15, 20 minutes. As with most other universities, we need uh, official transcripts. There is a $40 application fee. And as I mentioned, those test scores, those ACTs, those SATs, those are optional, but they can help you and they can bump you up to a higher level. So feel free to record my contact information. I have my email, um, that's my Google voice number. So I'm accessible at that all kinds of times. And then that QR code will allow you to scan that. And then I will reach out to you directly if you do scan that QR code. So whew, you ready, Matt? I don't see that you've come come live yet. I, I ripped and ran. I need to breathe for a little bit. But again, thank you for joining us um, on this evening. You all, you are great. Awesome. Thanks so much. And next up is Valparaiso University.
Hi, everybody. I forgot to mute myself, uh, unmute myself before I started my presentation. Um, my name is Jessica Jansen, and I am uh, an admission counselor here at Valparaiso. We are located in Valparaiso, Indiana, and I have a short video for you. Jess, we're not seeing your screen. Okay. Thought I had this all ready to go. <laughs> All right. So I hope you can see yourself here, even with maybe a mask on at this point. But I did wanted to share some brief information about us. Uh, we are located in Valparaiso, Indiana, which is about an hour from Chicago, about two and a half hours from Indianapolis. We were founded in 1859 and we sit on a gorgeous 320 acres. Uh, we are a residential campus. Students do live on campus for a total of six full semesters. Uh, and they have, we have freshman housing, on-campus apartments, and a lot of different options for our students to be able to be a part of our community here on campus. We are an independent Lutheran institution in the history of the university. We have an ELCA pastor as well as an LCMS pastor and St. Teresa of Avila, our Catholic Student Center. We are approximately 3,200 undergraduate students with an average class size of about 20, and our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. As I mentioned, Valparaiso, Indiana, we are most well known for our popcorn festival and being the home of Orville Redenbacher, uh, the, probably the grandfather of popcorn, uh, but we're also 15 minutes from the Indiana Dunes National Park. Uh, so we are 15 minutes from the beach, which is amazing. An hour from Chicago, we can access the city, access the park, uh, all within public transportation. The city of Valparaiso is about 33,000 residents, which is the perfect size to be able to walk downtown, go ice skating under the pavilion, or go to the farmer's market. Or you can hop over a five minute walk to Chipotle or Cadoba and Target and Starbucks. So we're in a really great location for our students to be able to be a part of our community. Here on campus, we are broken into five different academic colleges with over 70 different degree paths. So we have our College of Business, our College of Nursing and Health Professions, our College of Engineering, our College of Arts and Sciences, and our, oh, I'm forgetting one, our, our Christ College, which is our Honors College. We're the third oldest Honors College in the United States, uh, and it's modeled after Christ College in Cambridge. We've been recognized by US News and World Report and the Princeton Review and many other accolades to be able to really can show the passion that our faculty members and our community have for our students and their excellence, not only here on campus, but beyond. Our placement rate within a job or graduate school is 97% within six months after graduation. So we're definitely dedicated to you meet, reaching your, your full potential. Uh, all of our classes are taught by faculty. We don't have teaching assistants or graduate assistants. Uh, so if you are interested in maybe majoring in two different degrees uh, that are maybe in separate colleges, you're welcome to. We have engineering students who are also minoring in business. We have physician assistant students who are also minoring in dance. 
Uh, you have a lot of really great options here on campus. While you also, you can always pursue our Christ College Honors Program as well. So uh, the sky's the limit when it comes to academics here on campus. I know a lot of my colleagues this evening have also shared student involvement. You guys have so many opportunities when you're looking at universities and colleges and everything that's essentially at, at your fingertips at, at university. And Velpo is no different. So we have over 150 different clubs and organizations. We have Greek life on campus, opportunities for leadership and service. We, last year, we clocked in 247,000 hours of community service on our campus. Uh, so we are definitely dedicated to be able to give back, have that community here on campus and really foster that growth and development. We also have fine arts opportunities on our campus for students who are interested in majoring or not majoring. And you have the ability to continue to study music uh, or theater as an extracurricular or as, um, as a student. So scholarship opportunities too. We are Division I athletics across NCAA uh, Division I within the Missouri Valley. If you are interested in being a student athlete on campus, please reach out to the coaching staff. Their information is available on our website. Applying to Velpo, we are part of the Common App cohort as well as uh, we offer a free application. We are test optional this year as well as next year. And we would just kindly request that you send your supplemental documentation to us, including an essay. We are rolling admissions. So the only deadline that we have is May 1st, the National College Decision Deadline for you to select your university of your choice. But we do encourage the scholarship priority deadline of October 1st, or excuse me, November 1st. So then you have the eligibility to be accessible for all of our scholarships here on campus and be considered for all of the additional financial aid that is due to you as a student. I encourage you to reach out to me. Uh, my name is Jessica Jansen. I'm with Valparaiso University. Joel Johnson is also the admission counselor for the greater Chicagoland area. Uh, and reach out to us over social media. We hope you have a wonderful night and we can't wait to continue this conversation. Awesome, thanks Jess. Uh, we now have a couple minutes for some Q&A. So I'll ask all of our presenters to come back on camera and respond to this question. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And again, we'll start back up with Elmhurst University. Great, that's a, such a great question. So some of my kind of favorite events and events that students really like on campus is happens to be one of our traditions. So in the Chicagoland area, we do get a lot of snow. Um, so in midnight on the first snowfall of the year, we do have a snowball fight. So students come on campus and, you know, build a snowman late late at night and, and really um, encourage that. So that's one of our unique traditions that we have on campus. Great, and I think we're over to St. Anthony College of Nursing. Okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, one of our biggest events that we have on campus is um, our, what I like to, there's tons of them, but I'll just choose one of our, um, our farm days. So at St. Anthony College of Nursing, we are uh, really focused in our community. So we actually have uh, a day where our students, our community health students have um, gone out to the farm so they see all about our different um, dangers of farming that is a, a local community so they see the different dangers they're able to partake in on uh, different life-saving techniques um, a lot of that good stuff but overall in recent events we do have students um, giving COVID vaccines um, to our local community health care um, providers and teachers. So that is our big event of 2021. So we're very um, proud of that event. So thank you so much. Probably the best tradition um, for DePaul. It's my favorite. I know a lot of students is our Monon Bell game. Um, it's a football game we play every year with our rival school, Wabash College. Um, and basically we compete for this bell. Half of it's painted gold for our colors, half of it's painted red for theirs. 
um, if we win, we get to take it home. Um, so last year we won it. And then this year we didn't get to play because of COVID. So we got to keep it. Um, but it's the biggest, best football game ever. It's nationally televised on ESPN every year where alumni get together across the nation to watch it and they come to campus. So it's this big reunion for alums as well as for students. Um, and it also helps the founder of ESPN was a DePaul grad. So of course he wants to play the game on TV as well. Cool. Well, thank you, Quincy. So the tradition that I would like to share, it's called the cardboard boat regatta. Um, some other places do similar things, but essentially we have this campus lake that's beautiful. There's turtles, all the, the whole shebang. And people show up and they build cardboard boats and they compete to make it across the lake. You don't really make it across the lake much. There's a lot of wetness that day, but it's really fun just to see the students and the community members come together, um, painting their boats, duct taping their boats, um, and just going for a swim in our campus lake. So probably one of my favorite traditions on campus, and we weren't able to do it this winter because of COVID, uh, but it is our annual Christmas concert and annual Christmas tree lighting. So actually on campus, none of the Christmas trees can be lit up on campus until the main Christmas tree on campus is turned on. Uh, and we have a big celebration uh, for that and complete with fireworks in December uh, and Santa visits and there's cookies and hot chocolate and caroling uh, and then a Christmas concert the following weekend uh, that all of our music events uh, and organizations are a part of. Uh, and that's held within our Chapel of the Resurrection, which is the largest undergraduate collegiate chapel in the United States. So it is absolutely stunning. Excellent, thank you all. And that does bring us to the end of this session. I wanna say thank you for joining us. And that a, after you close this window, a quick four question survey will pop up. We do appreciate your feedback. Please do sign up for additional sessions. Um, and a recording will be available um, in about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. So again, thank you to our presenters and have a great rest of your evenings.